Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thank you for joining me. I'm here with round two of a modern friendly league. I won the die roll uh, this time, so I'm going to be playing first. Let's go ahead and have a look at the opening hand. Ah, uh, as many beautiful cantrips as there are in this hand, and we even have a one drop. Being on the play, uh, this is way too dicey. Um, if we whiff next turn, we're not going to be able to play anything on our second turn. So, you know, as much as it pains me, uh, this is definitely an easy mulligan decision. So this is solid. Actually, hands with multiple spreading C's in them uh, to start the game off uh, against an unknown opponent, I usually feel pretty solid about them. Uh, spreading C's can do so much work, uh, especially on the play. We play our land on turn one, the opponent plays their land. On our second turn, we get to take them off of whatever first land that they play. Say that they play a tapped Raging Ravine, you know? They're never going to get the red and green mana out of that thing. Uh, we're also drawing cards to help um, advise our strategy uh, moving into subsequent turns. So I really like these opening hands, and we've got enough mana to cast them. We're going to want another blue mana to play this guy, a couple more lands to play this guy. So an easy keep on a mulligan to six. The opponent kept his seven. Uh, so there's a Chris Catcher on top of my deck. That guy would be great if he was in my hand right now, uh, but since I'm definitely going to be playing a Spreading Seas, or uh, possibly, I guess, this Master on turn two, um, I'm going to want something a little bit more powerful than Curse Catcher. So I'm going to ship that guy and dig, dig more with my upcoming draw steps and Spreading Seas. So open out with Island and just pass the turn to the opponent. And we see Urza's Tower, which makes these Spreading Seas that much better. Opponent drops a Chromatic Star, and uh, that's it for his turn one. So I drew another blue source, uh, which is solid. Um, if I want to, I can play out this Master of the Pearl Trident. Um, as I mentioned, now that we're playing against Tron, um, the Spreading Seas become super great. So what do you guys do here? Do you play a Spreading Seas, or do you play the Master? Let's think for a second. For me, uh, having drawn the second blue source, uh, it, I think it is going to be better to play out Master of the Pearl Trident. We don't know what uh, form of Tron he's on yet, but uh, he's still two lands away from establishing Tron. So if I take this turn, this opportunity to get a creature on the table, even if he plays a second Tron land next turn, threatening to develop Tron uh, the following turn, we're going to have our next turn to, to set him back with Spreading Seas, while uh, swinging in each turn for at least two. So I think it's correct here to play out the Master of the Pearl Trident. See what land the opponent plays, and then start using the Spreading Seas in subsequent turns. Opponent is going to uh, cycle the Chromatic Star here, floating one green, plays a second Tron piece, and with uh, one more colorless mana, casts Sylvan Scrying uh, to find that Urza's Mine. We can check the chat just to make sure, and it is in fact the Urza's Mine. So we know for a fact now, with seven cards in hand, the opponent is going to um, have that third Tron land and probably be able to cast something nasty out of his hand. I drew a second Island Walk Lord, which is very nice, but he's going to have to wait because it's definitely time to slow this Tron deck down. I'll play out Mutavault, uh, pay a blue and a colorless uh, to take the opponent off of Urza's Tower. I drew a Vapor Snag. Uh, hard to say if that'll be useful. If the opponent does get to land a worm coil engine or something, we could bounce him. Uh, could also save one of our creatures from remo removal. So as I mentioned last uh, last turn, the plan is just to crack in with the Master of the Pearl Trident. There's that third Tron piece. And it looks like with three mana, the opponent has nothing to do that turn. Spreading Seas is really excellent in this matchup. There's uh, more heat with another Island Walk Lord. So again, with them just one land off of establishing Tron, it's sort of necessary that we play Spreading Seas here. We'll hit the Urza's Mine since he dug specifically for that one. A, a tiny bit more likely, I guess, that he doesn't have another one in his hand. And uh, let's see, what are we going to draw off that Spreading Seas? Harbinger. So uh, again, might not get that much value in this matchup since they don't play too many creatures that, uh, that we want to bounce. Going to swing with Master of the Pearl Trident here. And it looks like the opponent's got something. So there's a Spatial Contortion. Pretty nice piece of removal uh, that Tron decks tend to play. 
Now, I could use this Vapor Snag to save my Lord, but I've got so much uh, more creature power in my hand and a Mutavolt on the table. I think I'd rather keep this Vapor Snag just in case the opponent does resolve something like a Worm Coil. Uh, having some interaction is going to be valuable, and having an extra Island Walk Lord in my hand just seems like it would be a little bit clunky. So I'm going to let that resolve. I've already got two Devotion established if I do play out a Master of Waves. Okay, so we don't see another Tron land, so the opponent is still uh, at least two turns off of establishing Tron. So he plays a Ghost Coder and has no follow-up, it looks like. So there's our fourth land, and for me... Let's see... Could play out another Island Walk Lord, attack, uh, attack with Mutavolt for three, uh, following turn play another Lord and swing for seven... Seems a little bit slow. If we jam the Master of Waves, we're going to be getting uh, three tokens, establishing immediately eight power, and Mutavolt is also getting buffed. I think Master of Waves is the way to go here. So there he is, and uh, three tokens. Opponent uh, uses one of the uh, lands affected by Spreading Seas to cast a Chromatic Star. Uses the other one uh, to crack the Chromatic Star, Floating Green. What else? Plays a Forest. So uh, this is leading me to believe that it's probably just Mono Green Tron. Uh, if it was Red Green Tron, we'd probably see uh, Grove of the Burn Willows instead of a basic Forest. I've played against Mono Green Tron before online, and I'm not sure if it was this particular opponent. But I think that this guy is actually pretty high in the standings right now in the league. I think he has something like seven undefeated trophies. So the deck is definitely good. Um, we just happen to get a really solid hand with these opening spreading seas. All right, there's another Island Walk Lord. So pretty easy decision, right? Just play an Island Walk Lord, activate Muta Vault, and attack. I'm going to be swinging for uh, 13, I think. Seven plus six. Opponent does have a Ghost Quarter if they want to slow us down, but it's not lethal this turn. Not sure if they'll crack that Quarter or not. Oh, so here's a Fog. Now this is an interesting thing about Mono Green Tron, is that they seem to main deck Fog. Which I guess is doing pretty well here. Uh, it's preventing 13 points of damage um, for one card. But he's still going to be facing down that and more next turn. Let's see if he can dig something out of this. Alright, so playing another Chromatic Star, cracking the Chromatic Star again, green mana floating for an Ancient Stirrings. Uh, so he reveals an Expedition Map with the Ancient Stirrings, I guess he's probably going to play that thing out. But again, he's still two turns away from establishing Tron, so we feel relatively comfortable. Even though after having played, let's see, did he just play that forest this turn? He did. So yeah, still at least two turns away. Uh, he just hit his sixth land, so he is at Worm Coil Mana now. If he plays that card. There's so many variations of Tron, it seems like, now. Alright, so he drew another land. Um, potentially useful. I think it's just jam another Lord um, and activate Mutavolt and swing, right? So this turn, are going to be swinging for uh, 12, 18, exact lethal. So it's 5, 4, and 3, uh, which is um, 12, and then 6 over here, so 18. Let's see if the opponent has another fog. No, just going to use the ghost quarter, which... Uh, sets him back, he's again uh, down to 5 mana, and it's going to grab us a land, thin our deck a little bit. Um, we're still threatening uh, 6 plus 7 this turn, 13, so it's not lethal anymore. The opponent cracked the expedition map, probably getting a Tron piece, got an Urza's Tower it looks like. And yeah, he's tapped out. So probably going to take 13. Yep, goes down to 5. Plays that Urza's Tower. Uh, I guess something like Engineered Explosives on 2 could get rid of 
the spreading seas and a couple of my lords, but it still have lethal with uh, master of waves. And also, um, a monocolored deck probably doesn't play engineer explosives. So that was it. The opponent scooped. Pretty easy uh, game with those two spreading seas. Let's go ahead to game two. You know, after I sideboard, definitely bringing in the negates to counter things like Ugin the Spirit Dragon and Karn. Uh, but also bringing in some dispels to counter those fogs and just sort of try to close the game out as quickly as possible. Opponent's going to be on the play. And this is a keep, um, especially on the draw. We're going to want to hit another blue source, uh, but it's pretty solid. It could, of course, go nowhere if I don't draw that blue land, but we've got uh, plenty of them in the deck. Basically 20 minus 4, so 16, 15 left in the deck. Opponent kept and I kept, so two keeps for the opponent, two keeps for Merfolk. Let's see how this game goes. Opponent starts with the Chromatic Star, passes the turn. Alright. So for my draw sub, I hit an Aether Vial, which I'm super happy to see because uh, it's going to help me push all this damage out onto the board. I'm going to choose to go with Mutavault here as my first land drop. Uh, just in case I don't draw that second blue source on turn two. I'm going to be able to do something, uh, in this case swinging with Mutavault, while the Aether Vial takes up and uh, eventually lets me get my 2 and 3 drops out onto the table. So Mutavault can pay for the Aether Vial, and I'll just pass back to the opponent. They're going to start by cycling their Chromatic Star, or cracking their Chromatic Star, floating uh, 1 green. And it uh, looks like they, man, they cast Nature's Claim, uh, so I gained 4 life, but they got rid of my Aether Vial, which makes me a little worried now. I really need that second blue source, and I don't know what I'm going to do on my next turn as, as confidently as I did previously. Alright, so I did draw that blue source, um, so I have a choice this turn as to whether to um, continue with plan A and attack with Mutavault, or maybe to play the Curse Catcher, uh, which I was planning on deploying with the Aether Isle on one this turn. Uh, so what do you guys do here? I think that I decide it's probably correct just to attack with the Mutavault. Next turn, we're going to play our third land and play Regery, and if that guy survives, uh, we can play Curse Catcher for free and then follow up with um, more creatures with untaps from Mero Regery. So I'll play the land that the opponent already knows about, that island. I think I'm just going to activate Mutavault and swing. Take the opponent from 20 down to 18, start the clock ticking. So we dodge a bullet here. The opponent didn't have a natural turn 3 Tron. He has the Power Plant, Urza's Mine, and now a Ghost Quarter. Kind of stinks because he has um, an answer to Mutavault now. But I've got a lot more cards in hand than the opponent at this point. I'm sitting on uh, 7 on my next turn, and he's sitting on 4 right now. Alright, so uh, I drew another land, which uh, is going to help once I play that Rejury if he uh, survives to drop even more of these 2-drop uh, creatures. I'll play Alboro and just jam Rejury. Pass back to the opponent. Alright, looks like he doesn't have another land. Uh, things not really going the Tron player's way this match. So yet another Island Walk Lord. So play an Island, play the Curse Catcher for free. It's just going to click through here a little bit. I think you guys know the plan here. Basically just going to play out two of these three Island Walk Lords. It'll leave me with another Lord and a Harbinger in hand. So even though I'm potentially um, overextending here, I've still got creatures in hand uh, to, to follow up if the opponent wipes my board somehow. Alright, so activating Mutavault. Uh, going to try to swing in for 9 here. Let's see. Opponent using their Ghost Coder, taking them further off of um, Ugin Mana at least. I'll get to grab another uh, land out of my deck. Uh, and the opponent's going to take four from the Regery, and that'll be it for my turn. Okay, uh, cracking the Chromatic Sphere, floating green, Sylvan Scrying. And uh, I get to sacrifice Curse Catcher here. The opponent, after having uh, used their Ghost Quarter, has no more lands left uh, to pay for Curse Catcher. So we're going to keep that opponent, the opponent off of that third Tron piece here. Uh, he doesn't know that I have another Lord in hand, uh, so he might think the game is not quite over yet. I've only got 12 damage on board, and he's at 14. But I do have that extra Lord in hand. So feeling pretty good in this spot. If he doesn't have a land to follow up with, I just play my, uh, my next Lord and close things out.
Don't really need the untap effect, but target a land and untap anyway. Gonna swing for 15, the opponent's at 14, goes to negative 1, and that's it. So, uh, the opponent did keep their two 7-card hands, uh, but we managed to get there. Um, yeah, so uh, Spreading Seas did a good job in Game 1, and Lords did the job in Game 2. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Have you seen Mono Green Tron much in the wild? Uh, I, I think I've only seen it once or twice before. Um, they do have those fogs, which can be weird. Uh, seems like, well, seems to me that the red green version might be stronger just because it has access to uh, board wipes, pyroclasm, anger of the gods, uh, that can sort of actually deal with creatures instead of just pushing them off by one turn with a fog. I guess the thought is you push it off a turn, maybe push it off a second turn, uh, and then develop your mana and play Ugin and wipe their board that way or something. Uh, anyhow, pretty easy match that time. I guess the opponent didn't draw the right combination of uh, cards, and we got there. So let me know your thoughts. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I very much appreciate it, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video where I will be uh, showing a replay of the third round of this Modern Friendly League. Thanks as always. See you later.